to our show. While we want you to have a pleasant and enjoyable evening, the neo-futurists are also concerned about your safety. Smoking. <laughs> and drinking. <laughs> are not permitted in the theater. And please refrain from talking as it could inhibit the total theatrical experience of those around you. In the event of a natural disaster, such as an earthquake, <laughs> tornado, <laughs> or a nuclear explosion, boom! <laughs> Please remain in your seats and we will inform you as to the extent of the damage at the end of the next play. The theater is not scheduled to pass over any large bodies of water. However, if a nautical landing were attempted, the person next to you is your best bet as a flotation device. <laughs> At this time, we would like you to please reach over and hold the left hand of the audience member on your right. Go ahead. Don't be afraid. You have five oh, seconds to comply! comply. Five, five, four, three, two, one! Cause I 
I often wasn't the bad one Cause it feels just like the right one But the fear that it's the wrong one makes me There was something that I did That I did, I did it once There was something that I did That I really should have done There was something that I did That I did, I should have done There was something that I did that I Imagine this bag. This simple plastic bag is full and close to popping. It's full of something valuable. People would kill to know what's in this bag. But this bag is yours alone. No one can ever know what's in this bag. Unless you tell them. This bag is full of music you've heard. Meals you ate. People you know. People you knew. Places you've been. Rooms you've slept in. One night stands. <laughs> Things you found funny. Things you believe in. Things you've forgotten. Sunny days. Rainy days. Your first kiss. Now, imagine you hang this bag on a wall with a pin. Imagine this wall stretches for hundreds of miles. And it's covered with other small plastic bags. Some bags filled to the brim. Some barely full at all. But those bags aren't your bags. They belong to your mother. Your childhood neighbor. The waitress you never knew from a restaurant you never entered. Suddenly, this simple plastic bag makes you wonder. Am I in their plastic bag somewhere? <laughs> Why isn't my bag as big as theirs? Why did I collect all this shit? <laughs> <laughs> what will be left of me when I'm gone? Once upon a time, everyone had a big fucking thing. They all looked different. <laughs> Mine is big. Mine is beige. Mine is clever. Mine is fierce. They all sounded different. Ring, ring. <laughs> Hello, baby. But they all smelled about the same. Everyone took their big fucking thing everywhere they went. To work, to bed, to Safeway. Whoa. Than the one before it. And then state the 
obvious, as if it were really important. I am here, always here. Here I am, I am here. I am here, always here. Here I am, I am here. 
I am here. Always here. Here I am. I am here. I am here. Always here. Here I am. I am here. I am here. Always here. Here I am. I am here. Down and out. Always here. Here I am. I am here. I am here. Always here. Here I am. I am here. He is there. Always here. There I am. I am here. I am here. Always here. Here I am. I am here. I am here. Always here. Here I am. I am here. I am here. Always here. You could see his face. I am here. Always here. Here I am. I am here. I am here. Always here. Here I am. I am here. I am here. Always here. Here I am. I am here. I am here. Always here. Here I am. I am here. Waking up. Walking home. In the car. Eating lunch. Underfed. Overwhelmed. In a play. Baking bread. Feeling good. Still awake. Running late. Out of breath. There she is. She is there. Always there. There she is. On your mind. In your thoughts. And you flinch or you smile. When you think of the time when she first held your hand. And you wish that once more you could see her face. I am here. Always here. Here I am. I am here. I am here. Always here. Always here. Always here. Always here. I heard he was a liar. Definitely a liar. An outrageous liar. But I never met him. I heard he was a thief. A bona fide thief. Cash on the money larceny. I never met him. I heard he was attention seeking, always in the line. Well, I never met him. <laughs> I heard he was gay as the day is long. I never met him. I heard he was uh, an actor, a performance artist, a writer. I never met him. I heard he was living in New York. Uh, I never met him. I heard he was not much of a person. I never met him. When I'm gone, don't put me six feet under. Set me to the breeze and let me blow and wander free.
they talk about their husbands and their wives and their lovers and they're probably their paltry next to yours so you wait and you time it but then you stop and take a breath <sighs> and, and you think and you plan of a way to make a segue
floating just beneath the surface of any stagnant fresh body of water. Of course, they're impossible to detect at this stage. Impossible to see. But if your water's stagnant, chances are they're there. Just floating beneath the surface. Loaded, invisible, ineffectual mosquito chill train. But once grown, the adult mosquito emerges from its dormancy, floating through the skies, seeking out warm-blooded creatures like me, like you, and defeat. Of course, they may seem as innocent as they did as a child, but they're not. And they're not because once grown, the adult mosquito has the disease. And as an adult, it will give you that disease. It'll pierce your skin, find your blood, and drink until its belly is full and fat, and then it'll spit into the vicinity it just created. And once it's done that, then you've got it. You've got the disease. And then you're dead. And in those last moments before dying, try and tell someone that you're innocent, that you didn't do anything wrong. The only thing you're guilty of is letting them live long enough to kill you. Yeah. See what they say. So yeah, sure, I'm afraid of mosquitoes. <laughs> but you should be too.
here. This play is the one play that has the capacity to change your life. <laughs> After this play, nothing will ever be the same. You will be able to walk around knowing that you are a more complete person because you have seen this play. This play has the power to make you feel good for the rest of the week. <laughs> Food will taste better after this play. You'll feel great about your body after this play. The clothes that you're wearing while seeing this play will always receive compliments after this play. After this play, everyone will love you, even the people that think you are an asshole. <laughs> you are an asshole. <laughs> You will get everything you have always wanted after this play. Everything in your life will be yours after this play. You will get it and still feel like you want it after this play. <laughs>
heterosexuals. Oh my god, I know. My college theater department was oh, full of them. I was a little uncomfortable around them at first until I came to see how really charming they can be. Definitely. I mean, regardless of what you think of their lifestyle, you simply can't deny they tend to be very talented people and often very witty. Yes, they are awfully entertaining. I wouldn't want to go to a party where there wasn't at least one of them. Oh, no, they court the way they do. Oh, I know. It seems like they can all sing or dance or do impressions or something. And they don't all try to hit on you. Oh, no. Most of them are very polite. You just say no, and they usually respect that. Well, anyway, we're talking about heterosexuals in the theater. Right. Well, now, we should probably point out that there have, in fact, been many great playwrights who were heterosexuals. Right. Like, for instance... <laughs> like, for instance... <laughs> Neil Simon! Right, Neil yes. Simon! <laughs> and you really get a sense from reading his plays that He's a heterosexual, too. Well, it does tend to creep into their work. Of course. He was again barefoot in the park. There was that relationship between Perry or Laurie or whatever and that man... Robert Redford! Why, Robert Redford. Oh, and what about the star-spangled girl? Gosh, he kind of gives it away right there, doesn't it? Really? What's that? <clears throat> Oh my, ladies and gentlemen, I have some exciting news to announce. For the first time ever in the history of theater chat, we have a telephone call. Ooh. Well, actually, it's just Diana pretending to be a telephone call, but still, it is very exciting. Hello, caller. Um, yeah, um, I'm just calling to say that I am sick and tired of hearing about heterosexuals. I turn on the TV, I turn on the radio, it's all you hear about. I mean, what if a child heard this well, show? Just and another thing! <laughs> I don't think you keep harping on the subject all the time. If you were harboring some heterosexual feelings of your own, Admit it, Dave. I bet you're secretly heterosexual yourself, aren't you? Well, now, that's the first time I've ever been accused of that. But, for the record, neither I nor Louisa... Louisa? Louisa! Oh, my God, Dave, help me! Louisa! You haven't been having heterosexual feelings, have you? I'm just so confused. <laughs> oh, my God. It's okay. There, there are special neighborhoods for people like you. <laughs> and no one will ever know. Like Capitol Hill. <laughs> after the show, okay? <laughs> okay? Well now, ladies and gentlemen, that's all for tonight's theater chat. <laughs> so, until next time, please remember to be careful what you say, because heterosexuals really are everywhere. <laughs> No. no. He doesn't have any. Well, 
What was it? I had sex with them. <laughs> That's right. Through speed, straight page, technologically advanced lovemaking skills, he was able to hone his sexual talents and help these women through a very difficult time in their lives. After a wondrous night of sexual passion with Steve, these three very different and diverse women came to the conclusion that they were, in fact, lesbians. <laughs> special of making talents as a gift. And it would be wrong and selfish of me not to help as many women as I can. <laughs> Ha ha, funny. 
That it was two days later, lying in bed? When the memories came back? When the guilt disappeared. It's funny, isn't it? How guilty, how guilty I felt back then. Because you didn't mean to. And your friends said you were sorry. It's just that you were heartbroken. And shoving and grabbing isn't hitting after all. It's funny, isn't it? Then now I'm finally angry. That now you're not forgiven! That you never did apologize! That you really, I mean really, should not call again! That the bruises actually haven't healed. It's funny, isn't it? Poems. Goat play. I do not own a goat. Can you point to the fact that I've never owned a goat? Thursday play. Come with me. I love the rain, don't you? 
was invisible to him. He stood at the center of it all and declared the room to be empty. Squirrel play act three. I opened my mouth and found the dust of one squirrels inside after threatening them with two rods.
look at my show. He's a potato with nothing but 